Richard David Marlowe, who was affectionately known as Pee Wee by his loved ones due to his small stature, was born on the 9th of February 1935 to parents John and Gertrude Marlowe. The Marlowes had six children together. William, John Joseph, Eileen, Gerald, Robert and their youngest, Richard. During World War II, the Canadian family of eight lived on Beta Street in rural Etobicoke, Toronto, Ontario. At the time, Richard's father, John, was stationed out of town with his two eldest brothers, 23-year-old William and 20-year-old John Joseph, stationed in Belgium while serving in the army. This left Gertrude to care for the remaining children on her own. 18-year-old Eileen, 15-year-old Gerald, 12-year-old Robert and 9-year-old Richard. The 18th of July 1944 was a warm summer's day in Etobicoke and after a day of enjoying the sunshine, Gertrude, Eileen and Robert decided to go see a movie that evening. Young Richard had already seen the film the previous night so decided to stay home with his elder brother Gerald. According to one source, Richard had already been out with a friend that afternoon, stopping by a nearby drugstore before returning home. Despite it being evening, the sun was still out, so the nine-year-old decided to ride his sister Eileen's bike up and down Beta Street, where the Marlowes lived, with Gerald keeping a watchful eye on him. Upon Gertrude returning home, Richard was nowhere to be seen. However, his bike was lying abandoned in the yard. Panicked, Gertrude asked Gerald where his brother was, but he didn't know. Gertrude then went around the neighbourhood, asking friends and neighbours if they had seen Richard, but to no avail. For her youngest son to take off without telling anyone was a huge red flag, and as a result, Gertrude called authorities to file a missing persons report. Richard was a small and extremely shy boy, many presuming he was actually much younger than his nine years of age. According to his parents, he never broke the rules, he never went into dark rooms alone, and he never spoke to strangers. Richard even struggled to speak to his school teachers. Despite suffering crippling shyness, Richard was a very well-behaved and happy child who had absolutely no reason to run away from home. For him to do this would be completely out of character, which is why Gertrude Marlowe contacted authorities soon after she returned home and realised her son was gone. Upon hearing the news, John Marlowe returned home from where he was stationed to help aid in the search for his son, alongside police, family, friends and neighbours. The couple did everything they possibly could to help look for Richard, with Gertrude contacting various authorities, including the FBI and local newspapers, for help. During the days that followed, police scoured the area for the young boy along with army militia. The likes of ponds and creeks were drained, abandoned buildings were searched from top to bottom, and authorities even searched down wells in case young Richard had fallen into one, but unfortunately their efforts yielded no results. Not a single clue could be found in regards to the boy's whereabouts, and as a result, the case quickly went cold. Despite authorities and the Marlowes doing everything in their power to find nine-year-old Richard, no trace of him could be found. Even years after he disappeared, Gertrude wrote to newspapers and made annual appeals for information regarding her son's disappearance, making sure Richard's story was kept alive in the media. She firmly believed, without any doubt, that Richard was still alive, but perhaps he had suffered from memory loss of some kind. 
The family were approached by psychics who offered their services, but the Marlows did not take up their offers due to the expense. Over the years that followed Richard's mysterious disappearance, a number of reported sightings of the boy were called in to police, some claiming to have seen him in the west of Canada and even in America, more specifically Florida, but unfortunately these claims could not be verified. The Marlows were informed of any John Doe's found in and around the Toronto area that matched Richard's description, and they continuously went down to the morgue to see if the body in question belonged to their son, but it was never him. Due to the lack of any clues in the case, what happened to Richard remains a mystery. There was no evidence found to suggest foul play. It was as if he disappeared into thin air. Although abduction seems a more likely theory, there is no evidence to back it up. If the nine-year-old was kidnapped, who took him and where did they go? Why did they take him away from his family and what did they do to him? These questions still remain unanswered to this day. There were rumours which later circulated, suggesting that Richard had been murdered, with authorities allegedly having a suspect, but unfortunately, just as the other lines of inquiry had, this lead met a dead end. At the time of his disappearance, Richard Marlowe was nine years old, standing between three feet eight and four feet tall, and weighing around 50 pounds. He is described as being of Caucasian descent, of a slim build and small stature, with blonde hair and blue eyes, with dark eyebrows and dark eyelashes. He also carries a distinctive scar at the edge of his hairline by his right temple. When he was last seen, Richard was wearing a dark blue nylon windbreaker jacket, a pair of long blue trousers, a striped jersey and a pair of cotton grey coloured socks with a yellow band around the top. He was also wearing an aluminium ring with the initials KL engraved on it. Unfortunately, since his disappearance, four of Richard's siblings and both of his parents have passed away. Gertrude died 10 years after her son disappeared in 1954, and her children believed that the heartbreak of losing Richard led her to an early grave. His father, John, passed away in 1973. There is a burial plot located next to John and Gertrude in Glendale Cemetery, which is meant for Richard's remains, should he one day be found. There is a memorial plaque there bearing Richard's name, waiting for that day. Richard's last remaining sibling, Bob, still marks his lost brother's birthday every year, and prior to her death, Gertrude, their mother, lit a candle in the window for Richard every single night, in the hope that the candlelight would help guide her son home. Every year, Christmas presents for Richard would lay untouched under the Christmas tree, with his stocking hanging on the fireplace alongside his brothers and sisters. Despite the years that have passed, the youngest Marlowe child has never been forgotten. In 2019, news outlets reported that Bob Marlowe had given authorities a DNA sample in the hopes that it might be matched with Richard or potential unknown relatives through ancestry sites. A match is yet to be found. Richard's niece, Gail, whom he never met, became fascinated with her uncle's story and within recent years managed to get his case listed on the Ontario Provincial Police's Missing Persons and Unidentified Bodies database, as well as on Missing Kids Canada in the hopes that someday new information will come to light. As of 2021, however, 77 years after he vanished, Richard's case remains the oldest unsolved disappearance of a child in Toronto. If he is still alive today, he would be 86 years old. The Marlowe family and their descendants are still clinging on to the hope that someday Richard will be found. The mysterious circumstances surrounding his disappearance has been something which has never been far from their minds. 
All they want is closure and for Richard to return home where he belongs so that he can finally be reunited with those who loved him the most, whether it be in life or in death.